My name's Dave Steele and I'm the pastor of a church here in Brighton in the UK. I obviously encourage my church to think locally and get engaged in its community. But I'm also trying to encourage people to think globally. How do we get that balance right? If it's occasionally just sending a couple of people abroad is one thing. But what about the rest of us? Are there other ways for us to get involved? Chewy side. Like most church leaders, I regularly preach about the Great Commission, Jesus' command to take the gospel to the whole world. The challenging part, though, is always convincing people that he wasn't just talking to some of his followers, but he was talking to all of them. But practically, how many of us are in a position to sell our homes, quit our jobs, and move to Timbuktu or wherever. So if we can't move abroad, how can we get involved in mission? I think there's a number of different ways, and one of the most effective I know of is to go on a short-term mission. Yes, it's a few weeks of your life. It's gonna cost you some money. It might mean that you have to go without a summer holiday because of it. But in terms of an investment, I honestly believe that it can change your life. A few years ago, I was a team leader on a short-term mission trip with an organisation called Latin Link. Uh, we worked with uh, communities in Peru. Um, there were communities that were under-resourced and had very little and lived in shanty towns. And the impact on my life was that it made me realise and recognise I wanted to work with under-resourced communities and people who had very little in this country as well, which is actually what I do now, uh, what I do for a living, and what I do um, in urban communities in London. I would definitely recommend anyone to um, be open to experiencing short-term mission. It's not only about what you can give, it's about what you receive in order to then give on to others. So in an ideal world, Everybody would go on a short-term mission trip at least once in their lives. But for a whole bunch of reasons, that's simply not possible. And for those people who can't go, there's a danger that you start to tell yourself that therefore you can't be involved in world mission. But I don't think that's true. Anybody with access to a computer has the ability to encourage those who have gone. And it might have more impact than you can possibly imagine. Social networking has been a great tool in maintaining meaningful relationships with our churches and friends and supporters back home. There are times as missionaries that we really want to feel like we're being prayed for. And the problem is, is that sometimes it just feels like it takes too long. By the time we get, you know, the newsletters back home, well, that problem may have already been solved, you know, or, or may have gone away or may have gotten worse. But the thing with social networking is it allows us in a real-time way to get things out there. And so recently I was talking a lot about some of the feelings of stress and burnout that I was feeling, uh, just the daily grind of life getting to us. And immediately, you know, we had people responding saying, we're praying for you. I've been there, I've felt that myself. So now with social networking, we can use things like photos um, in any moment, uh, videos tell us, to tell a story about what's happening. For example, right now, my wife is five months pregnant. Um, and so as we go and we have the ultrasounds and the doctor's updates, via social networking we can put those pictures up of the ultrasound of our new baby. Uh, we can post those to places like Facebook and, and stay close uh, with family and friends who are actually 8,000 miles away. But we still feel like they're a part of this special time in our lives.
One of the great assets of every local church is undoubtedly the children and young people within it. They're the church of now, but obviously they're also the church of the future. So it's absolutely vital that we invest in young people at this age and get them excited about global mission. We talked earlier about short-term mission trips and OMF do one specifically for young people called Serve Asia. Sending young people on a trip like that is going to need the support of the wider church, but it could be a great investment on so many levels. Mission is of paramount importance to the uh, spiritual life of members in the church. Many a time, church members, especially young people, they come through the Sunday school and, and they, they learn about the Bible. And it's just head knowledge, rhetoric. I remember one of our young adult units, um, in one of the mission trip, she saw the supernatural work of God through healing of the sick and even deliverance of those who are demonized. And after the trip, it just hit her that God is real. That the reality of God is not just something up here, but it's something in her heart. And her, her response was literally this, oh my gosh, God is real. What am I going to do in my life? And from then on, she began to pray more seriously, read the Word of God and study it more seriously, and began to ask God and for, for the calling on her, on her life. Pretty much everybody watching this video will have been impacted by mission in one way or another. You might not have thought about this, but there wouldn't be churches or even Christians where you live if other people hadn't got engaged in mission. So what about you? What will you do? We're asking you to pause for a moment and pray and ask God to reveal to you how the best way for you to get involved in this mission would be. So pray believing, because there isn't any plan B. This is his plan to redeem our world. And how are you going to get involved in it?